Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your man, Willie Brown, fellow Hamptonian, class of 1984, comedian ventriloquist, Onyx, coming back to you. And I wanted to say I know that you're going through a lot right now, but guess what? We're all going to make it through this together, and I believe we're going to be much better on the other end. So we just have to maintain and keep the faith. That's right. Where will we be without the Lord on our side? Oh, he is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Kappa Alpha Psi. Till the day I die, say it like a brother when you say it to another. Say K-A Psi by New Pi. And I know I've gone too far. I've gone too far. But look here. I want to give a shout out and a big thanks to Dr. William Harvey. Also to Gary Hunter and the Hampton Cares campaign along with the staff at the Department of Development for allowing me to bring comedy to you during this great fundraiser. You know, we're doing a special fundraising project for the students that got caught up in the COVID-19 pandemic. So folks, we're gonna bring you comedy. We're gonna have people come on with testimonials. And we're also gonna be making a plea for you to dig deep in your pockets to help support the cause. We're appealing to all of the alumni. Folks, hey, you know, there are many students who were caught at school when this happened some of them lived on the East Coast. Some of them lived in the middle of the country. Others lived on the West Coast. And they had to pick up, grab their things, go home. Some of them had to come back. So, I mean, these kids are working hard and they're trying to get their degrees. Many of them are right in the middle of what they started. So, folks, let's support them. And that's what this is all about. All right? Great. Okay, folks. Some of you may have seen me before on television. I don't know. You may have seen me on the Best of BET Comic View. Maybe you've seen me on HBO Def Comedy Jam. Could have seen me on Showtime's Barbershop Series, the Ricky Smiley TV show. Most recently, I don't know. You might have seen me on Bounce TV's sitcom, The Last Call. Could have been the movie All About You. Or you might have just seen me at the QT trying to pump some gas. Or I could have been at the post office, you know. Or you might have seen me in the unemployment line because, you know, comedians, hey, let's face it, we're not essential employees, all right? <laughs> Look, before all this happened with the COVID, I was blissfully uh, driving for Uber in between gigs, all right? And I'm not just your average Uber driver. No, I'm an Uber driver with a master's degree and proud of it, all right? <laughs> Uber is like the army. It's a great place to start. If you want to see the world, drive Uber, all right? I'm telling you, you'll go to places that you never imagined more than once. In some places you'll go, you wish you hadn't. Now, I know for a fact I done picked up some people that other drivers probably would have left, probably because I felt sorry for them. I'm like, what? You in this neighborhood? Whew, I know you're trying to get out of here. I'm going to swing around one more time. <laughs> I'm telling you, you ain't going to get rich doing Uber. I'll tell you that right now. You will eat. And speaking of eats, if you ever order Uber Eats, I want to tell y'all folks, you got to tip the driver, okay? Tip the driver, please. Don't have us bringing the food all the way up to your house, driving all around the neighborhood trying to find you, and you don't even give us a tip. Look, man, think about it. You don't know me, you know. You don't know what I might do. Not that I'm going to do anything to your food. But what I'm saying is you ought to show me a little gratitude, all right? I'm telling you, you don't give a driver a tip, you're going to be a, a few french fries short of an order, okay? You're going to have a few bones short of a of a half rack of ribs. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're wondering why you got a straw in your drink, okay? Hey, hey there's a straw in my soda. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, think about it, all right? And cause Uber, man, they'll send you out. You'll be driving, man. Ding, ding, ding. As soon as you try to get home, it's like ding, ding, ding. I'm telling you, they want you to keep on driving. Keep on driving. It's like the, the, the closer you get to home, the more they want you to drive. And Uber's trying to make money, man. I mean, they don't care. They don't care where you go. In fact, you don't even know where you're going until after the person gets into your car. And I think they should have some kind of special warning. You know what I mean? Like, whoop, warning, you're in a level nine neighborhood. Drive-by shootings, illegal drug activity, and possible carjackings. Imminent bodily harm is possible. Warning, you're in a level nine neighborhood. I mean, they, they ought to have some kind of warning. You know what I'm saying? Really? <laughs> Anyway, I'm taking pretty good care of myself. Uh, I'm down here in Atlanta, Georgia, trying to stay COVID-free. You know, they opened up the state of Georgia, and uh, we can now go to barbershops, hair salons, 
and to uh, tattoo parlors. Like, I really need to go to a tattoo parlor right now. I was thinking about getting that tattoo of uh, Booker T. Washington right here on my bicep. Oh, and I also thought maybe I would get a Hampton Pirate right here, you know, <laughs> college pride. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> but the truth is, man, we're trying to take the necessary precautions, you know. I went out to Publix. I bought like $2,000 worth of groceries. Ain't paid no bills, okay? I don't know if I'm the only one, but I bought $2,000 worth of groceries. Ain't paid no bills, all right? I might get foreclosed on, but I ain't going to be hungry, all right? I can see the sheriff outside. Come, Mr. Brown, we need you to come vacate the premises. I'm like, okay, I'm coming. And I'm walking out the door with a pork chop sandwich in my hand. Say, hey, don't touch these groceries. That's all I'm saying. Just don't touch these groceries. You know, it's strange everywhere you go, seeing people wearing masks. You know, I never thought we'd come to a time where uh, it'd be okay for a black man to wear a mask in the bank. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, Mr. Brown, we know that's you. It's all right. Come on in. <laughs> you know, look, i tell you, man. And the young people, you go out to stores, the young people, they're not even wearing their mask. I'm like, what's up with that? They're like, hey, this ain't for us. We're the class of 2020. Hey, hey. COVID-19 can't do nothing to us. It's for all y'all old geezers over 50. <laughs> Got us using recycled toilet paper right now, folks. All right. It's so bad. I'm starting to use loose leaf notebook paper. I figure the kids ain't use it. I might as well go ahead and use it, you know. Man, but I don't think I'm really prepared for this crisis. I don't know about you. I really don't feel like I'm prepared for the crisis as much as I should be. I mean, I don't have a flashlight. I don't have a radio. I don't have any batteries. I mean, I do have a gun. You know what I mean? But I ain't got no bullets. All right, folks? How you gonna have a gun and ain't got no bullets? It's ridiculous, man. I got the bullets that came with the gun. I got the accessory pack. That'd be like you buying a printer and you got the cartridge that came with the printer. Man, what can you do with that, man? If there's ever a, a fight or something outside, a firefight, what am I going to do? I can see him now. I'm like, pow, pow, pow. And I'm throwing the gun like in the movies. I'm throwing the gun at the people. Man, it's ridiculous. I'm telling you. My wife and I, we're doing pretty good so far, though. We're holding up. You know, you get to know somebody when you're on quarantine like this for three months straight. I mean, you really get to know them. If you didn't think you knew them, oh, you know them now. That's for sure. And we're doing pretty good. We're trying to wash our hands, you know. We're trying to observe the precautions, you know. I think he's going a little bit too far, though. I told her the other day, I said, babe, we're supposed to be practicing social distancing, not sexual distancing. Yeah, really. I can hear Marvin Gaye doing the remix. When I get that feeling, I need sexual distancing. Sexual distancing ain't good for me. Makes me feel not fine. Helps to retrain my mind. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, some people, they think this, this whole COVID thing is a joke. But I'm telling you, it's not a joke. People are actually dying out here. Really. Did you hear about that Kojic? Bishop, Church of God in Christ out there in Michigan, who passed away from the COVID, and seven of his Kojic friends went to his funeral, and three weeks later, all of them were gone. Yeah, ridiculous. And how about the bishop down in Virginia? You heard about him? He had the cameras in his church. He said, turn those cameras around and show all the people that's up in here. Everybody was waving and stuff like that all close together, not practicing social distance. He said, the only way they're going to get me out of here is if they arrest me or as if I die. A week later, he was gone. I'm like, hold up. This COVID is serious, man. I don't know what they're talking about. It ain't serious. It's serious. <laughs> man, it ain't no joke. Hey, don't tempt God, okay? That's why all I can say. Don't tempt God. You know, you know the story. Satan took Jesus to a high mountain. You know, when Jesus was going through the 40 days of fasting, he took him to a high mountain in the wilderness. He said, look, Jesus, if you jump off this cliff, I'll give you the whole entire kingdom. I'll give you the world. Jesus was like, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Satan, if you don't get away from me with your crazy self, you better get out of here. Man, I ain't jumping off the cliff for you. Even Jesus didn't jump off the cliff. <laughs> and he could have. Jesus could have flown off the cliff. I mean, Jesus walked on the water. Come on. Hey, folks, look, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm telling you, right now, we're going to take a break and we're going to go talk to some people who are going to let you know why we're doing this great uh, fundraiser. And folks, we're going to come back. And when we do, I'm going to have an exciting guest that I want you to see. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right? Yeah.